Hello, everybody, and welcome to Alien Ad again on this fine Friday. Uh, before we start, usual things. Uh, if you go and visit our merch shop, we've still got those T-shirts up for a limited time the rest of the month, and then there'll be new T-shirts there. Um, also, go and subscribe to the podcast, like, share the video, all the other good stuff. Uh, without further ado, Dave, Ollie, and our guest, Greg, from Strange Sauna Podcast. How are we doing? Hello, everybody. Yes, that was an awesome intro. You guys got my little stinger in there. That's great. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a good little, like, you know, it's, it's a thumper. Very, very short, but it yeah. kicks, kicks ass. Yeah, I got confused. I thought I was doing my own show for a second. I was like, wait a second. Are they on my show? Oh, no, I, 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 I completely stole that. I'm like, that's going in the intro. Okay. Your hey, intro is going in our intro. Well, yeah, so we kind of chatted a little bit before the show. Um, the reason why my show is called Strange Sauna, for anybody who doesn't know, is this is an actual sauna that I converted into a little podcast studio. So when I first moved into this house, they they ripped everything out of this sauna, so it was just empty. And, you know, with the wood still in here, it's just the acoustics. It's just, it's really just dead in this room, so it's perfect for a sound studio. Nice. It's a nice, it's a, how many people would you normally fit in that sauna? Would oh, you dude, like me, and that's it. <laughs> maybe, maybe a couple of my kids, but that's, that's about it. Yeah, you wouldn't want to go in there with your, like, your, your mate. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah, that, that probably wouldn't turn out well. No, we would knock a lot of shit over. Yeah. But anyway, so what are, yeah, what's, what's going on, guys? What, is, what are you guys all about? Well, I mean, this this show started off with Ollie doing UFO debunks and looking into UFOs and aliens. Um, me and Dave are essentially crazy conspiracy theorists, and we've broken Ollie to the point where he doesn't even believe in aliens anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> gotcha. So, that, so um, how did you like? Why, why did you start doing Strange Sauna? Yeah. So. Um... Strange Sauna was a Patreon thing. Um, I was actually on a podcast for a really long time called Pardon My American. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we got banned because the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, something here in the United States, they claimed that we were domestic terrorists because we were talking about QAnon and Patriots and Trump and all this stuff, right? Um, so we got booted off of YouTube. We got uh, our our RSS feed got pulled and we were with anchor. So they owned everything. So they owned our RSS feed. Go upstairs, buddy. Sorry. It's one of my kids. <laughs> okay. We'll be up there soon, but yeah. So, uh, sorry. I just, no I got three kids, yeah, dude. It happens. I told you, I warned you. <clears throat> so yeah, we got kicked off that. Um, we ended up changing our name to the last Americans podcast. Mm -hmm. So that way we could get back on Spotify, get back on all that stuff. Um, but then, yeah, so I started doing strange sauna just by myself, um, because I still wanted to talk about the conspiracy stuff. I mean, um, the, the Q stuff, I was big into that. Uh, I, I don't subscribe to that anymore. Unfortunately. Um, I, I think a lot of it will happen. Um, I don't know, even know, do you guys know what the, the Q stuff is? 
Yeah, well, that's how oh, that's when I first started listening to you because this is the um, uh, since the guys gave me control of booking guests. All I've done is book people I want to speak to. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, okay. I I found the part of my American podcast like way back when you when you guys first started doing it. Okay. And um, I I was. I was I would say I wasn't like hard into the Q stuff, but I, I definitely had like an interested eye of, over it. Mm-hmm. And then I, I I think I felt kind of I definitely had that like hope porn thing going on oh, with yeah. it. Where I, thought, I, I kinda hope it's real because you know, if it's real, then 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 there's some good good guys out there. Exactly, um, yeah. But my my mind kind of kind of went with you guys. That's I, I think it's really really like it's funny that you guys get pulled. Um, round about the time when you're uh, you, you're kind of saying like the Q stuff's not real. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, it's like I was all for it up until it never happened, and you know, it still might happen. Mm-hmm. But I think I I think that it's it's a completely a different scenario now. Whereas I thought it was like this underground patriot movement. I think more of it's it's like revelation of the method where they have to tell you what they're going to do before they do it. And I, I'm not saying that like Trump is a bad guy, but I'm exploring that idea. And I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, like Donnie Darkened on Twitter. I've just watched both your episodes um, on Trump. Um, so yes, I do now. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's pretty interesting. I mean, the connections where Trump could actually be the Antichrist. Now, I, that's like so cliche to say like, oh, he's the Antichrist because like, Oh, that just means you think he's an evil person, but that's not it at all. It's more just like no one thinks that they're going to like or agree with the Antichrist. And that's Mm -hmm. something that will happen. I mean, you will subscribe to the ideas and you'll like the Antichrist. And I'm not even like that biblical. Like, I don't know uh, the Bible verses like off the back of my you know hand and stuff like that. But when I listen to. Uh, that Tim Pool episode with Donnie Darkins, um, Sovereign Bra, and Drew Tang Reborn. Some weird names, but they they kind of made this argument that we were we were being like lied to. We were being led down this false path where it kind of makes sense right now because mm-hmm. in, in America, you got Joe Biden, and he's just clearly one of the worst presidents we've had. I mean, America's gone downhill. Inflation is rising through the roof. I mean, worldwide, too. But uh, it's just like a clear transition where you see you you have Trump as your president. Things are kind of rocking and rolling. We're not getting into any new wars. You have, um, you know, your your money's looking good. Your bank check, your paychecks are, are going well. Gas is decreasing in price. So it's like the the random things where people are going like, okay, what does a good economy look like? That's kind of what we were in. But I think it was all just kind of a superficial, contrived market. Because even when Trump was running in 2016, he was saying that we were on a bubble. Like our American economy, our American economy was on a bubble. Where, I mean, you you can only inflate the dollar so much before it's going to crash, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's... and, And he did push spending more than any other president. I mean... Towards the end, it's because of the the COVID spending and all that. So people were saying it was justified, but still government spending nonetheless. So I don't know. I mean, I'm in this position right now where I'm going like, okay, well, so if the Q stuff does happen, it will make Trump look even more powerful and it will make him look um, like, oh, there was this plan. And oh my gosh, like he he freaking fulfilled it. He fulfilled the MAGA plan. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. so everybody will follow him even more because they'll be like, oh, dude, yes, this guy has been in charge this whole time. And he's he's rocking. He knows what to do now. It it makes sense given um how much of a shit show Biden in America is right now. You know, it's because it's 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 almost giving people no choice. Like the mm-hmm. um the only people that would that that would vote for that again, I like, pr- probably shouldn't be allowed to vote anymore, you know, because it's because they're, they're clearly not thinking about what they're doing. Yeah. And that's, that's, you know, a whole other thing. It's like, should we have some sort of SAT to vote? But, you know, that's a whole nother topic. But yes, it's like the clear chasm between the two administrations where, you know, Joe Biden is just so horrible, mashed up right next to Trump's administration. So it's like, of course, you can see it that much easier. 
you know? What was the thing that snap that woke you up, snapped you out of the queue from being a believer to you took the words out of my mouth. Yeah. Dave. Yeah. To, to being like, wait a minute. Yeah. So it, it was a slow transition because at first, you know, when it never happened, that was like a gut punch. Cause like what I expected to happen was that Biden would either be arrested or like the military would take over our country in like right before he got, uh, you know, uh, like nominated or, or voted to be the president. Right. Uh -huh. And so <clears throat> when that never happened, we kind of discussed it on our show and I was just like, you know what? Like, yeah, maybe this, this stuff isn't even real. And I fake, I ate a fake turd on the show. Cause I was like, Hey, I'm going to eat poop. If, if I'm like, if this stuff isn't real, I'm going to eat a turd. And then I, you know, some people bought it, but I was like, it was just candy. Don't come on. It's just, it's fake poop. But <laughs> You know, and like, so that, and then I started listening to other shows where they're like, oh, well, it had to be this way, you know, because people had to wake up, you know, you have to go through the dark, you have to walk through the dark to get to the light. Mm -hmm. And that right there, dark to light, walking through the darkness to get to the light is a Freemasonic phrase, like to a T, mm -hmm. you know the, what I mean? The where we go, where we go, when we go all thing that, that really caught me today as well. When I was listening to the second part of your episode. Yeah, and, and that, so um, for anybody who doesn't know, that that was like something that Donnie Darkin had said is that where we go one, we go all, I think I'm just trying to uh, rephrase off the top of my head, is something that the fallen angels, it's in the book of Enoch, it was a phrase that they had said before they were all buried under Mount Hernan? It was some mountain, right? Mm -hmm. And it was just something... say with confidence and we'll believe you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go, yes, that's what they said, trust me. <laughs> But that's, you know, I, I, I got to verify it because I heard him say that. I tried looking it up. I couldn't find that phrase anywhere. But I know, like, the Book of Enoch is heavily censored and whatnot. But, yeah, so it was it was that kind of stuff where I'm like, well, why do we have to go through the dark to get to the light? And then, honestly, it was Trump and his affiliation with pushing the jab, mm -hmm. you know? And, and he's still, still yeah. Yeah. So even even still now, and there's a lot of, you know, people talking about how how could he be doing that? Like, how does he not how could he be so disconnected with, um, I, you know, I know we're on YouTube, so I don't want to, like, push any buttons, but I, I think they've already been pushed. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, you know, the consequences, we'll just say, of the medicine, the miracle medicine that he's been endorsing. So it's just the that, consequences being pure happiness. Yeah, oh, yeah. Your happiness, <laughs> <Longevity. laughs> cardiovascular <laughs> health, yeah. saved millions of lives. So <laughs> that's that's something to me. Like personally, I just I can't get over that. I know some people are like, well, he didn't mandate it. He didn't, and I was like, yes, but he is still endorsing the product. He doesn't talk about anything else. He doesn't talk about alternatives anymore. So that it was a big game changer for me. And then that's when I started questioning Trump, and then kind of questioning the whole thing, and then. I just I had these feelings that Donnie Darkin shared the entire time. I just didn't know anybody else was out there who kind of had gone down and done the research themselves. And so when I found his page, I was just like, I, I want to read every post that he has because I've been having these feelings, but I just don't I, I didn't have anywhere to go to like validate them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's that's it in a nutshell. But <clears throat> here we are. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew several people who were way down on the Q path. And um I was uh I was in a, a DC location on an interesting date in January, and there were a lot of people there that day with the flags and the signs, and when it all went sideways, you could just see like that was the moment. They're like, mm. wait a minute, where where's the troops? This isn't supposed to what's going on? And um it was something, man. It was something to see that. And a lot of people, a lot of my friends, they they don't even want to talk about it now. They're they're so black pilled on everything. I don't see them voting for anything. Like yeah. they're just they're out now. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And see, that's I'm trying not to be black pilled, you know, yeah. and I hear people say, like, eh, you know, and 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 uh, to what is the definition of black pilled? I mean, where's where's the line? Where do you draw yeah. the line? Um, and I just don't know if like because when when you look at like Donnie Darkened his only answer is Jesus. And I'm like, well, I, I mean, okay, that works for some of the population of the world, but what about mm -hmm. Muslims? What about, uh, you know, all the other 
religions that are out there. Yeah. So it's just one of those things where it's it's not a foolproof answer for me. So I'm still searching for what could be the end game here. This is the I, page, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the Twitter page. So everybody go over, give him a follow, check it out. There's a lot of uh, deep dives there. Yeah, that's for sure. I had a I had a conversation with some of my friends. I actually am going to go meet with them later this evening. And one of the theories, like we we talked about politics now for after that those events happened we all moved into the same neighborhood mm. like we're like all right whatever whatever's coming isn't good yeah this is, there's no way like one of the topics i think on tonight's discussion is 44 percent of um single family homes was bought by private equity last year 44 mm. percent yeah and you wonder That's, why what are they doing with those homes what are they doing yeah it's well i mean from like a, a finance perspective i get it like the more homes you buy at higher value in a neighborhood, you're artificially inflating those prices. You can then use those as collateral to take out loans to then invest in the market. And you inflate the rents on those properties. So when they're not rent, they're a tax write-off for any of your losses. It's mm. brilliant. But it tears the economy in apart in a way that shouldn't be legal. Like they shouldn't be able to, like this isn't okay. Um, our fear is that nobody's at the helm. It's yeah. all these individual actors tearing each other apart and, and we're... The captain went off the ship a long time ago. Yeah, like he right. did such a good job of steering it. We can see land, and we thought we were going to hit the port. Really, we're heading towards the rocks. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, it's like Game of Thrones. You know what I mean? It's like the battle of the freaking fittest. And then, um, you know, even even the guy you want to win might not be the best thing for you. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but where are all of you based out of? Uh, I'm in the Isle of Man, which is like a small island in between England and Ireland. Okay. I'm in I'm in the middle of England. Okay. Like York, Yorkshire, like the Dales. I'm in Tennessee. Tennessee. Okay. Tennessee. Awesome. Awesome. All right. And then um so the Why did why... we get that reaction? Yeah, I know. Well, yeah. because you know, I, I know Tennessee, man. That's me. That's us <laughs> freaking US, baby. No. It's okay. It's okay. We all know why. All right. Yeah, we all know why. <laughs> you know why? Because you guys have a king and unicorns and wizards and dragons, and it's ridiculous. Yeah, but, but we, we, we might we might not have a here. princess anymore. Yeah. Well, yeah, honestly, the real reason was because I didn't know where the other two places were on the map, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, I know where Tennessee is. That's cool. <laughs> so it's just it's more of my naivety. But I was looking up kind of topics before I came on here, and there was another monolith. That was uncovered in Wales. Yes. When, when was I, this? I've just, I've just seen that one the other day. So it's about two days ago, three days ago. It happened this week. So there's been another one as well before that. Am I right? Was there another one found? Is that like the second one this year? So I think this was this was the only one this year, but there right, were like okay. five or something. There was a ridiculous amount in 2020. Mm -hmm. And so the theory is going is that... Um, you know, you had all of these monoliths that were strategically placed all around the world, Utah, Romania, mm -hmm. uh, the UK, all, all over. And then you had, because that was in the middle of the big C, little V, you know, I just, yeah. the CV-19. And right after that happened, the next month, you had the Miracle Medicine come out with the first trials. And that's where, you know, it was all introduced. And then in 2021, it was rolled out to the public. But it signifies a change. And if you look at like Space Odyssey uh, 2001, the movie where you had the monolith in the beginning, it signifies the attaining of knowledge and going through some sort of metamorphosis and becoming godlike, right? And when you look at this whole like agenda and um, uh, what's the word? Um, Apotheotheism. Mm -hmm. It's the becoming of a God where man becomes God. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what they're saying. The AI is trying to do like, that's what Elon Musk wants to do with this brain chip technology mm -hmm. is if you can't beat him, join him. Okay. Well, if you can't, you know, if you can become a God, then you're going to want to become a God. And so that that's the theory. Um, so I don't, I don't know if this monolith thing presents that um, maybe this next year is going to be, just as crazy as 2020 if not even crazier because you have this uh, uh great american clips coming up here on april 8th too it would be yeah. interesting to know if it, it to watch now how 
if if there's more monoliths discovered, if it's a set amount before something else happens, you know, and it it, it is just the beginning of some sort of ritual. Mm-hmm. That, that was what I was going to touch on. It depends, like what. So if I remember correctly, they found the one in Utah first, right? Mm-hmm. And then it went east, correct? You know, I honestly don't. I don't remember the order. I, yeah, but I, I thought know... it was like the UK and then Romania and then they found one in San Francisco. There was yeah. actually one on Christmas Day that was made out of gingerbread. Oh, so, I'm gonna discount that one. I would so, you know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> dang, dude, these are aliens. So they're freaking hungry. Yeah. <laughs> so if it's east, if it's west going towards east, ritually that would be in search of illumination. If it's mm. east going towards west, that's in search of something lost or hidden. Or revealing, or hiding, yeah, uh, depending on how you look at it. So I, I just think it's interesting that in how they're being revealed and hmm. when. That is just interesting too, because I've I've heard um, I was watching other shows where they're talking about numerous articles of Trump east to west. So Trump is always flying east to west. So uh, Trump goes east to west to talk to uh, Beijing, or goes east to west to talk to Kim Jong Un. You know, yeah. So that would be that would be in search of something that was lost. That's actually mm-hmm. a part of Masonic rituals is when you go west to east, you're in search of more light illumination. And then when you go back east to west, uh, you're searching for something lost or or what you left behind. I get you. Yeah. Huh. I find it funny that he's well, not funny, quite scary that he, he keeps saying um to 2024 is the last chance. I mean, does he just mean to get him? It, is that just to get him in? Or is that... It almost yeah. feels like he's saying it for humanity. <laughs> I know, right? It's like very dramatic. But <clears throat> he's a dramatic guy, obviously. And then he was saying that in 2020 as well. Where mm-hmm. he's just... It, it, it almost like... Since 2016, every election that we've had in the US has been like this is it. This is the most important election we've ever had because if they win, the bad guys win, kiss your rights goodbye. Kiss the Constitution goodbye. Like, they're going to come in with this uh, global ID. You're going to have, like, your digital bank currency. You're going to have all this, you know, globalism will take control if Trump doesn't get in. And so that's that's the freaking the other half. It's like, what do you vote for? Because you know that's hell on earth. But then if Trump is not who he says he is and he brings hell on earth a whole different way, you know, it's like, yes, it will be great for a small period of time. Yeah, assuming that Trump will uh, turn the economy around. But knowing what you know back in 2016 when he was saying that, hey, the economy is running on a bubble, it's going to pop. What is your solution for this? You know, like he, no one is coming up with a solution for this except for the government. And you see that in the background where you do have uh, the central bank digital currency being deployed and being developed and, and having it just last July, they came out with a, like a, uh, a training program or like a pilot program for this. So I do think that that will be, because if you think about it, they can monitor every purchase that you make and they mm-hmm. can turn it off turn it on. They can tell you what to buy, what not to buy. So it's the ultimate control mechanism for purchasing power. Well, see, this see, this is why I think um, the like the, the U.S. is almost like the the kind of the final political battleground for this sort of stuff. Because I've said on the, on this show before, like in in the U.K., you have two main parties, right? and the, our, because of our like voting system, it's our like first past the post system. It's it's you're either going to end up with a Labour or a Conservative government. Um, both leaders of the conservatives and leader of labor are um young global leaders for the world economic forum mm-hmm. so we we have the epitome of a uniparty now and no nobody unless you sort of scratch the surface of conspiracy theories right realizes that people still think that a vote matters either way and it's it's just going to plow, plow forward with the same thing. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think in America, local elections still matter because your states are so big, they're like small countries in themselves. Mm-hmm. And I, I kind of think that's why it's all, it's all fell to you guys being last because that has to stop for if, if there's any uh, credence to the idea that the uh, world economic forum want to put this sort of 
like sweeping uh, controls in over the West. Um, that has to stop. You can't have such a you can't have a, a country with such autonomy. Yeah, but is it a false autonomy? You know, is it um, is it an illusion to make you feel good and to make you buy into the system to continue to vote for the system to continue supporting the system? You know, mm-hmm. so that way you don't rise up. I, do you think, I think there's a way out? Sorry, sorry, Dave. No, do, do you think do you think there's a way out of it? Like, do you think there's a or, or are we kind of on this like coll- collision course with with doom? Well, so that's, I guess, the black pill. You know, mm-hmm. when I think about taking the black pill, it's like, oh, we're we're effed. You know what I mean? Like, no mm-hmm. matter what choice we make, like, we're going to have hell to pay, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, <clears throat> honestly, I don't know. I, I, I don't think right now, because I haven't seen anything be fixed with the election system since 2020. You know? At, at least enough to, like make me feel like this thing isn't going to be like a big, you know, cluster F. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if there is a way out. And, and, you know, like people are saying like, well, Trump's the way out, you know, and I'm like, well, if he was such a threat to this globalist system, like everybody in power sees this man as the threat, why is he still alive? Mm-hmm. And people are going, well, because he's just, he's, he's insulated, dude. Like he has a lot of, I'm like, no, like you have, leaders of all over the world who have been offed because of either what they've done, what they've gone against the system. And this man became the president of the United States. And you don't do that if you don't have a lot of power behind you. And I don't know if that power is the good guys or if there are good guys, you know? Mm. Yeah. I think that's a good point. Are there good guys? What is a good guy? Mm -hmm. Like, People's like, well, we're the good guys because we're this country. Government itself is inherently not the good guy. It's just not. The only point of government is more government. That is, is it, its whole existence is to grow itself for more mm-hmm. purpose of control. Um, I I see because obviously I'm, I'm in America as well, and I watch this. I think our states being broken up is is an interesting thing. The influx and migration you're seeing from certain states to other states. Uh, laws that are getting passed, things that are doubling down, states that are suddenly becoming very un- very unfriendly to the federal government, almost keeping it at bay as this other, right? It used to be, you know, the federal government works with all the states, we're all one, and now mm-hmm. it's this other entity in a faraway place that's outside from any rules, whether they be constitution or state laws, and it's just totally off the chain doing its own thing. It's, I think it's going to be like a state level it has to be back at the state level but no matter how it cuts it's going to be messy right like we're seeing major cities now in the u.s that are like yeah law enforcement from x to x isn't going to be there and by the way we're not going to respond to anything other than like an active shooter right uh, yeah that's a problem yeah yeah if what you do live you in think, that city. well what do you think about them uh well not them but people willingly and voluntarily funding funneling themselves into specific states so like for example, Dave and Chris, the other two guys on um, mm-hmm. the Last Americans podcast, they moved to Texas, mm-hmm. you know, and so you had an influx of either Republican thinking people or just people who were fed up with the woke ideas and the woke mm-hmm. West Coast move inward. And, you know, so it's just like, are they are they doing this as a trick to filter and, and funnel everybody into one location so that way they're more controllable there? I see that's a good one. I, I've my friends and I, we go back and forth, and I've talked to the guys in the show about this. Uh, I think it's harder for the boys here to understand because you know, differences. Um, we, we've just got one person that runs an entire country really badly. No, you have that. you have a king, you have a king. Think about it, you have a king. What makes him the king? He said he's the king. Hey, you're about to have a new king, too. You yeah. have a new king. We've we've got far more uh, far more things to worry about, given the fact that we appear to have misplaced Kate Middleton. Middleton, with <laughs> no idea where she's gone, no idea right? whatsoever. Don't ask those questions. <laughs> Don't ask those questions. So, uh, like, like, what is going on with Kate Middleton? Like, is she I don't know. the the photo that I saw was like a bloated face? She was like in the car. Oh yeah, I saw that. You guys are going to be talking about that on your next show, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. The AI photo that went viral. Yeah, well, the the second photo was fake as well. Like the yes. um, 
the, there was a photo of her supposedly leaving the hospital in a car and mm-hmm. somebody has uh, found exactly the same headshot of her like somewhere a few years ago. The only difference is so she had an earring in in that one and the photoshopped the earring out, but it's it's the same head. So that's mm. not real. Um, there was another picture of her uh, in a car, which did not, I mean, like, let's, let's all be honest here. Kate Middleton's hot. And this woman that was in that car was yeah. not hot. She was bloated. She was missing yeah. the mole or something, right? Yeah. It just reminded me of, it reminded me of uh, seeing that picture of Hillary Clinton when she looked fucking terrible in that car. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, <laughs> which yeah, her clone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to say. That's the problem with cloning technology. It's breaking. You know, down they now. just yeah. some clones don't turn out. Uh, you know, but as for the people, because uh, the state I'm in right now, we've picked up, I believe, close to a million people. Like, they, holy they, moly, it's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. There's whole neighborhoods here for people from California. Whole neighborhoods wow. here of people from like they just move in a. As far as is the government orchestrating to get people to move? I don't believe so. I believe that's why they allowed interest rates to go the direction they did to try and stop that from happening. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also think they're getting private equity. When you look at the homes they're buying up, like prevalently in California, they're doing it to keep the economy afloat there, keep those taxes going to cities. Otherwise you just have a wash of homes that are empty that no one's renting Mm -hmm. that have all sold for crazy prices. So what, what's going on? Uh, I could see finance guys putting that together, but like a global conspiracy that is so big that we're going to isolate these people in states by putting slow pressure on time is either AI level intelligence or demonic level intelligence, which may be the same thing. Who knows? Uh, but as far as people coming in that I've seen, as long as they realize that they ha- why they had to leave and why they had to come, they're fine. But the moment they show up and they're like, no, nah, we're going to make this just like where we left. Right. Do you? you realize you had to run out of there. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's the whole argument for like, why build the wall, you know, like illegal immigration, you know, it's like Mm -hmm. you're leaving a country where it was war torn and you're coming here and you're not adapting to, you know, uh, it's just, it's the same kind of concept. And that's, that's one thing that, um, you know, Dave and Chris got a lot is that they were like, Oh, you guys are from Washington. Uh, you better not be fucking liberal. You know what I mean? Like people would tell them that. It's like, and, well, ooh, okay. Rightfully so. Yeah, rightfully so, man. Like, one of the things that I hear a lot here is is not to knock them, but like a California, they say, well, I'm a conservative or I'm a Republican or I'm whatever. I'm constitutionalist. I'm for the Republic. And you're like, that's awesome. Like, where are you from? California's like, oh, you're a liberal. Like, no, 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 no. I'm these things. Yeah. Awesome. How do you feel about red flag laws? How do you feel about, and you start talking to them and you're like, see where you're from. That's what you were here. You're the enemy. Mm. you know like you you haven't acclimated yet like just right sit back and the reason this is a safe place is sit back and see how everyone lives see how we don't we don't get up in arms because the city's not doing everything well my sidewalk's broken you can fix it they sell concrete at lowe's <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh yeah <laughs> you're welcome to do it and they're like well we need to pay pay more in taxes hire more people give them more leverage over your property and your land and what you can and can't do and what you can and can't say and you can and can't have and then it, it it where does it end yeah so just fix the damn pothole yourself you know exactly. like roll on exactly yeah. man roll on yeah. yeah so that's i mean when it comes to just the population movement that's something that i've thought about is just you know is this is there a bigger theme to this where we're all going to be filtered into these pockets and what could they do with that just to kind of like put this on the alien track i i i I saw your show on the super bowl that you Mm. did with um i can't can't remember who you what was the person's name ryan Ryan gable yeah quickly i fucking love the fact you just called it a super bowl ollie carry on (laughs) (laughs) that's a super bowl (laughs) but we 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 did we did a show on that and okay what 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 do you ask? I know you like you guys had your your views on it, but what do you what do you think it's just like advertising that's just clever at, at the time, or do you think there's something in this that, like the the rabbits going down the hole, the UFOs? Yeah. Do you think there's anything to this, or do you think it's just clever advertising for the time that we're living in right now? 
Uh, it could be. And, and, um, so just in full, um, clarity, that episode was for last year's Super Bowl. So oh, for I'll this see you, Super Bowl. I watched that today because I don't, I don't, I don't see your adverts. I'm from the UK. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. But um, yeah. So even the same thing happened with this year's Super Bowl too. Is that you had a lot of commercials and people will watch the Super Bowl to see the commercials to gain like, okay, what kind of trend are they going to set for this year, right? Mm -hmm. And so in that episode, I believe uh, that was two years ago. So we were looking at rabbits getting kicked yeah, down the I rabbit hole this and i thought i never saw that advert when i went and did the show the other day they yeah. did they, they dave sent me the wrong adverts yeah so that was that was another year ago so i mean right. if you're looking at you know if you're not connecting those things yeah it's it's all um i just oh, i put it out because it was better, then. that's even better but why why is the super bowl doing so many conspiracy adverts exactly yeah and a lot of them this year were ufos and aliens mm. It was like every ad break, there was a UFO or a alien related commercial. And so there's a lot of thought going into that, right? Because I mean, there's a lot of money. What is it like th $3 million or something for 30 seconds? It's something ridiculous mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where, um, you know, you're having this trend of the alien di disclosure all throughout last year. And it really kind of, um, you know, with the the Grush guy, he went into Congress. I don't know if I buy that, but there's just there's so much where they're they're building it up really, really slowly to come out at a certain point with this alien topic. Right. Yeah. Well, this is why I bring it up, because uh, I don't know if you well, you will remember when when Hillary was uh, trying out, uh, she uh, mentioned a few things about it but, but very briefly and it was john podesta who mm -hmm. was her like weirdo in the back and he is a weirdo <laughs> that's um, one way to put it do you think they could be doing this because do you think we're going to see anything at this election um when it comes to a, dis a possible disclosure like a hint of like maybe Trump saying something or one of the other candidates saying something about this. Yeah. I, I think it's a possibility Baron Trump might be an alien. I mean, he's six, eight now. He's a big uh, guy. So he might be part Nephilim. Who the hell knows? No, I honestly though, um, <clears throat> I heard, do you guys know who Tim Alberino is? Yes. Yep. Tim, yeah. yeah. We, we, we had his friend on Doug that went to Peru with him uh, a couple oh. weeks ago. Yeah. Yes. And whatever happened to that Peru thing? Did it, was that real or still going on? <laughs> yeah. They, okay. they, they both think it's like a hundred percent real, like whatever, whatever's going on. They, they spoke to a load of people. The, um, they, they went out there to like Doug's like a, a ex military guy. And he, they went out there to try and like help them with tactics and stuff like that and took mm -hmm. weapons out them to out there to help them defend themselves. And the, like when we were speaking to Doug, he doesn't, think it's beyond the realms possibility that it's like some sort of human hunting reserve in like some mm -hmm. sort of hunger games type situation where you've got human beings in um advanced tech that are going there to to hunt people that yeah, no yeah, one yeah. else would ever believe mm -hmm. well and you know that's the thing is they they attack these populations where they're you know it's not a first world country you know what mm -hmm. i mean where it's not like you don't have the surveillance that you would in like downtown Los Angeles where there's a camera on every corner. You don't have everybody with a cell phone that has access to the internet. They can like record these things. I'm just assuming. But then like the, the stories that they come out with to cover that up, like jetpack miners and stuff. I'm like, that's more BX? ridiculous than aliens. You know that what I mean? More ridiculous than aliens. Like the, the, and well, it was, we, we did it on, on the show and we, we were looking for, and it was something like, there is jetpacks or like the best consumer jetpack that you can buy now costs something like 300 grand. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so these miners down there in this right. third world country spending 300 grand on jetpacks and then navigating thick, dense forest in them. Yeah. Like expecting not the whole thing to catch on fire. Yeah. You know? It's like an eight minute fly time. Like it was yeah. nothing. Yeah. Well, so where I was going with the Tim Alberino is that I heard him, this was about a year ago, I was kind of getting into this idea, is that like, what is the whole alien disclosure about? Mm -hmm. And he got into this, um, 
the apotheotheism where he thinks that there's going to be, I'm going to try to remember, there's three different avenues to this, where you have the um, the coming in of aliens, right? You have the disclosure from the Vatican as well, like the Vatican will be involved with this. Mm-hmm. And then you have the um, the ramp down of Christianity and also um, atheism. So he's saying that Christianity and atheism will both kind of tamper down and go away. And when when you have nothing left, that will bring the rise of a new religion. Mm-hmm. And he was saying that this, um, oh, transhumanism is another part of this, where the the goal of transhumanism is to implant technology into people that will give them abilities to become like gods. Early. Yes, right? And so that is the ultimate goal, to become God. And this apotheotheism is the belief that man is God. And so I was exploring this whole idea, and I'm like, okay, that totally makes sense to me. And they're going to, like, these aliens will come down. They're going to be very glorious. They're going to be presenting themselves like we have this much knowledge. They're going to be powerful, strong. And people are going to want to be like them. And they're going to know things. They're going to know like hidden knowledge. They're going to know things instantaneously, just like surfing the web. And what can we do to be like these things? And they will say, well, you put this stuff in your body and then you'll slowly morph into, you know, this. And you can get upgrades too. Like if you do what we tell you to do and you follow the right thing and you have the great uh, social credit score, you might be able to upgrade to God's status, you know? So you'll never that. get you'll never get cancer. You'll net you'll you know you'll right. You'll age slower. Mm-hmm. It's really it's, interesting, isn't it? The the the, the, the idea of like of, of upgrading a person because I've always thought this as far as like the neural neural link goes. Because obviously, it it's it, what they're doing now as far as it having like health benefits with like pain and stuff like that and the the, the idea that it's going to help people that can't see see stuff stuff I, mm-hmm. I, I get that you're talking about using something as a a medical product that can fix existing things but we all know at some point we're going to be trying to access the internet with those things mm-hmm. so at what point when that when that's happening if that's in, 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 uh, in, interfacing directly with your brain in a like matrix, I know kung fu type of way. At what point do you stop being a person and just become part of the hive? Because you haven't had to do anything to to attain that knowledge. It's just you've all of a sudden got it. So like everything, you if, if you go and like learn jujitsu, for instance, you're gonna go through that and like the 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 struggles you have learning it and the, the techniques you learn will change you as a person. So mm-hmm. obviously, like if, if you can like attain all this knowledge instantly, the person you were yesterday before you put that in your head, before you switched it on, is dead. That's that person doesn't exist anymore because you're a new thing now. Yep. Um I I just I don't see enough people like talking about that that sort of consequence. Yeah, no, that's that I mean, you um you persevere, you know, perseverance and, and you grow through struggling, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't you don't grow getting everything right and giving everything handed to you. You have to earn it. You have to go through um, the struggle. And that's where people go, OK, well, so the dark to light, you know, like I have to walk mm-hmm. through the dark. I got to earn my lumps to get to this better place, you know. And so that that does make sense in the way that you just put it, where, yes, when you're when you're learning a skill, when you're learning some sort of trade or um, some expertise that will provide a benefit to you, your family, your community you have to learn it correctly and you do have to know the consequences of doing it incorrectly because you have to train other people Mm -hmm. what could happen right like safety all these other things but with the uh with the brain chip stuff uh i don't know if you guys have ever watched anything with edward snowden and Mm -hmm. like the technology in your cell phone and what they have Mm -hmm. the capabilities of tracking just the uh the ieDD or whatever the heck it's like the unique id for every single cell phone uh, laptops yeah so if if they have those chips i would have to agree that uh, or have to believe that the brain chips would have those and so you're having this technology in your brain that it was uh 100 all of the time trackable mm-hmm. 
So you can't go away. They will know where you're terrifying. all or where you're at at, at all times. Mm. I mean, it's you know, terrifying the fact that you can't. Um, I, mean, I remember in the early 2000s, there was a a lawsuit in America, which obviously failed. But it was somewhat, I think somebody was like, do it, um, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what the correct term is. I'm going to say petitioning. Um, Google for there was like a, a right to disappear bill, if I remember. Mm. And the 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 idea being that everybody should have a have a have the choice to, to put their hands up. And go look, I've gone too far down this internet thing. I would like to be wiped from the internet, and uh, I think we'd all like that now. You know, can uh, because we you know, when you look at the as far as like data being stolen and stuff mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. um, we all went onto the internet far too gleefully. You know, like sticking our uh, email address in at any point to get free things because we thought it was free and it wasn't free. They just wanted, they wanted data offers. Uh, the idea that you couldn't do that from the real world, you know, there'd, there'd be no right to disappear from the real world. That's, that, that's a nightmare. Well, like, like, uh, Ted Kaczynski said, uh, the worst thing that happened to humanity is, is the industrial revolution. Uh, <clears throat> little, little TK there. It's uh, he's got some interesting works out there. <laughs> Just saying, you want to be in a right mind when you read them, though. Uh, don't want to go to those dark places. Something that occurs to me when we talk about putting trips in our brain, like this is just a personal belief of mine. I think that you are a soul, you have a body, and mostly the mind and brain are an antenna, right? Mm -hmm. Like this consciousness is some form of quantum phenomenon that we don't quite understand yet. Uh, and we want to tap into the software that's processing and receiving and sending what would that allow in with you? What would that stop from, you know, you, everyone gets that intuition, right? Like you're like, Ooh, I should grab an umbrella or, Hmm, I should call my mom or wow. You know, I'm not going to take that bus. And, and sure enough, the bus gets in a wreck or it rains mm -hmm. or your mom fell or what if that goes away? Yeah. That's, that's the hive mind that, uh, yeah. one of, one of you were talking about, but it's, it's one of those things where, um, you have, you have a soul, right? And you, everybody's wondering, okay, so that must be God. Like, is, where does this come from? So it's almost like they're trying to replace your soul with something that is not. And there is like that whole theory out there. Um, what is it that uh, the, the, the players, like non, non something players and NPCs, 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 NPCs yeah. Yeah, yeah. NPCs. where like these are people without souls. Mm -hmm. And that's the argument for clones is like, yeah. you can create a clone, but it won't have a soul. So you have mm -hmm. to put something in it. So let's put a brain chip in it. So that's an artificial soul. Yeah, it, it's it's something or a potential way to hijack or lock it in. Uh, that NPC thing I always find interesting, especially when you look at the data. I actually just read an article today talking about it, that there's like, you know, 50-ish plus, plus percent of people don't hear an on, inner monologue when they think. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's mind-boggling to me i cannot i i was i always believed that that wasn't true and then i met someone who they're like oh yeah it's not like the, what are you thinking about they're like what do you mean <laughs> yeah. i just, just like, oh, 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 I found one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh no <laughs> i think with my eyes and i go to where my eyes guide me you know yeah, yeah. so what do you what do you think uh, is going on on the grander scheme of conspiracies because there's so many things out there so many conspiracies which ones for you hold weight you know because you got the hillary emails which are 100 real the podesta emails which are 100 real talking yeah. about bizarre things we have things about uh italian flatbread with sauce and cheese and yeah. various meats covered things we have little Just green men in the moon yeah we i mean there's so many things out there uh, which conspiracies that you've encountered through your, your various podcast work and you've gotten to talk to a lot of people, which ones just like resonate and you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's real. Uh, you know, like I tend to go where that the evidence is. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at the symbolism that is being used, you mentioned like the pepperoni pizza and all that stuff. Um, there's a lot of just, there's other symbolism that's being used all throughout ancient history mm -hmm. as well and so when you see that being continued you're going okay what is this being used for i know it's there i know they're doing something with it i don't know exactly what it all means like what energy do these symbols garner for whoever's using them 
Um, I think that there is a lot of astrology. I think there's a belief in um, astrological events can cause certain things or they will use some sort of energy. I don't know how, mm -hmm. but if you look at like full moons, for example, I mean, Trump got COVID on the full moon. Mm -hmm. The first man to die of the big C little V got that, that he died on a full moon. There's a lot of things that they will use that. And it's almost like an illumination, you know, it's like they use that to drive forward events that they want to happen, mm -hmm. you know? So they will, they will make one story, uh, you know, little molehill turn into a mountain. So I don't know if they're, they're trying to do that, but I've just seen evidence of astrological events being used to like drive ideas, drive, um, events that will occur in the news. Mm -hmm. I think that there is a system and this is why I liked the thesis that Donnie Darkened was putting forward is that he calls the whole deep state system, the Babylon system mm -hmm. where it's like this harlot where the beast will tear down the Babylon harlot system. Right. And we all know that it's bad. We know we can clearly yeah. see that there is something going on behind the scenes where there are children involved, right? There's, mm -hmm. Um, other things that are being involved and we, we can all see that that's bad and we agree that that needs to go away, but who's going to take over and like, what is Trump's overall kind of idea and what is he going to replace it with? You know, we, we all agree it needs to go away, but mm -hmm. we're not getting to agree with what it is replaced with. We think we know what it's going to be replaced with, but when you look at Trump's ties to Israel and you follow down that pathway and you go, okay, well, so what does Israel want for the world? That and then you song have to... was hilarious, by the way. Yeah, the song. Yeah, yeah. Super Trump. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so everybody can go check out the last episode I did on the whole Trump Antichrist thing. Yeah, they... Uh... <clears throat> so I, I just look at that because, like, that you can't deny. There is... There's obvious ties with Trump and Israel, like his family, uh, mm -hmm. just, like, the way that um, they perceive him. I mean, they perceive him almost godlike as a messiah, the savior. Mm -hmm. So it's like one of those things where you can't deny those connections. Um, but there are some like, you know, the moon stuff, the the re reptilians, like the fun stuff that I, I do like to just to dabble yeah. in because I find it entertaining. Mm -hmm. But when you have one guy kind of spouting off, um, I did an episode about... Um, Oh man, I, I forget his name, but he was the guy who was like an engineer and he went to, um, it was like in Arizona or something and he was digging um, tunnels. Um, we did a show about him. Um, yeah, I can yeah. Phil, yeah. Phil, 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 Phil Schneider, Phil yes. Schneider. Yeah. yeah. Phil yeah. Schneider. Yes. Yeah. And he got his like fingers blown off by this, uh, alien and all that stuff. He went down yeah, he into, ended, like, ended up looking like a T-Rex, didn't he? Like, oh, yeah. God. And so I'm like, okay, that sounds cool. But like, where's the proof dude? And he's like handing out all these rocks. He's like, you know, these, these rocks were all down in these, the, you know, this elevator shaft I went down and you know, it's like, okay, he did all of these things and he was saying some entertaining and, and like provocative things. Mm -hmm. And then he ends up dying and you have like uh, a catheter string or catheter tube around his neck, you know? So someone choked him and you're going like, so, okay, so why would somebody do that? Yeah, that, that was probably the most interesting part of his story that I found is how he went out in the end. Because it, we joke, I joke all the time. Like, you know, every day is a day that I'm at least 15%. I'm never zero, but never more than 15% sure that reptilians rule the world. <laughs> like it's, it's always there every day I wake up and think those lizard bastards, you know, uh, but it's never zero. Some days it's one, never more than 15. Uh, how he died suddenly makes his credence to a story and how he died is actually kind of one of the arguments I, I've heard and kind of agree with why they haven't gotten rid of Trump is that you would make a martyr and suddenly a lot of the conspiracies that are out there, you would, you would give so there's so much fervor around him mm -hmm. that if you did that you, you would ignite it and then then we don't know where we're going then every major city looks like northern ireland did yeah. during the, the height of the troubles and i mean we, we don't I, know what we do then i would argue that it's already gone there i mean he already is kind of a martyr i mean yeah 
um, he can sell a t-shirt with his mugshot on it. And he did that within 20 minutes of the mugshot being released and he made millions of dollars. So I'm just saying like, he knows how to market being the victim. And that's where I'm thinking, okay, is this a legit victimhood or is he trying to do something here and draw in an audience and retain it for some reason? Yeah. The, the one good. thing I, I think we should definitely clear up is none of us have any problem with Jared Kushner. And he seems like a great guy and his family's wonderful. And by any means, if this ever gets filtered, just know where I stand on that. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm happy and well adjusted. There we go. Jared. It's yeah. uh, it, it's pretty interesting, Trump, uh, and the, like, the victim card thing. It's it it, sh- it shows he's good at marketing himself as a vic- as a victim when he's also got like a solid gold flat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 There is there's a lot to uh <clears throat> and not just like talk about Trump the whole time, but I did look at um the raising of Osiris. I did an episode where Trump mm-hmm. is is has a lot of ties to the Sun King, right? And if you look at like the raising of Osiris tradition, uh, Tom Horn, he was like this kind of biblical guy, but he would look into conspiracies from like a biblical point of view. He recently mm-hmm. just died. And he, <clears throat> there was this documentary called Belly of the Beast, where if you look at the United States uh, Capitol, the whole Capitol, mm-hmm. just, uh, just in general, is laid out in various kind of peculiar ways right that resembles an owl isn't that is there, isn't there, is there, is there there's a lot owl? of yeah. there's a lot of different uh configurations within there there's like pentagrams there's an owl mm-hmm. there's like you know all these ancient symbols too so you have like an obelisk like this gigantic obelisk and you're going why do we have an obelisk in you know at the capitol or the washington mm-hmm. dc like what is it doing there <clears throat> and so he was saying that every United States president undergoes the raising the Osiris ritual, which is going back to um, the ancient gods of Egypt, which is like Osiris, Isis, Set, and Horus. And the whole story, I don't know if you guys know the story or not, but <clears throat> Osiris is this great king. He's He represents tradition. He's like the, the pyramid, right? He's the... Uh, all of your traditional values, culturally stable, but he doesn't see the future and he's very um, naive. And his brother Set, who represents Satan, and that's like, if you if you follow the story down lineages, it's like mm-hmm. Set and Satan are one. Set kills Osiris. This is his brother. He kills Osiris. Long story short, chops him up into 14 pieces. And Isis, yeah, right? Isis is also the sister, but also uh, Osiris's wife, right? So Isis is mourning. She comes up. She represents chaos. And when she comes up to the world, there is chaos. And she she finds all of the pieces. She finds 13 of the pieces of Osiris except for one. And that one is his phallus. She can't find the penis. You know, it's always the dang penis, dude. Right? Oh. So she she constructs an obelisk, and that is what the obelisk represents. It represents the penis of Osiris. I and, feel like they've gone for something less pointy. Yeah, I mean, it looks a little. It, <laughs> That's that <would> personal hurt. <laughs> preference. <laughs> yeah. So it is what it is. But so she 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 sits on the obelisk through magic, creates her son Horus, who has eyes like a falcon, who can see. And he could see like Osiris could not, right? So he could see the uh, the future. He could see things because he mm-hmm. fly above. And if you watch like the story of the Lion King, the Lion King is basically all of these stories. So like um, Mufasa is Osiris, Scar is Set. Yeah, the bird, that's Horus. And then you have, you know, it's just, it's the Disney does these stories and they reanimate all this stuff. But mm-hmm. Horus goes and defeats Set and then gives so he loses the eye right in that battle when he's fighting set he will kill set and defeat him but in the uh process of doing so he loses the eye and that's where the eye of horus comes from right and so when egypt um mythology you see the eye of horus all over you know certain uh, mm-hmm. emblems and just um it's just all over the place and so what <clears throat> jordan peterson i don't know if you guys have heard of him 
he did like a brilliant kind of synopsis of this whole thing where I walked through listening to him talking about that and I equated Osiris to Trump. And then I found this uh, Tom Horn interview where he's saying, well, every time the president, you know, becomes president, they go through this raising of Osiris ritual Mm -hmm. where uh, you have like these secret kind of prayers that are done in secrecy and it's all Freemasonic. And they do it at the, uh, um, I believe, the Herodome, right underneath the um, the painting of George Washington on the roof, mm-hmm. where he is painted as a god. And he's not painted with, like, Christian motifs. He's painted with, like, the gods of yesteryear, you know, like all of these just pagan gods that you wouldn't think that, you know, if you're like, okay, we're a religious country, you would be surrounded by you know a, a christian like motifs but he's not so i'm i'm looking at trump like okay well if he's osiris and he doesn't see what's coming he gets taken out by set maybe like biden represents set in this situation right and you know he will return as you know osiris risen because every time they go through this ritual osiris rises again and their thought is that every president could have the opportunity to have the soul of Osiris within their body. And they don't know who, which one it's going to be, but if it is the right one, it will stick. And then this whole thing will come to be, and that will be the right ruler. And I'm just, I, I'm looking at this stuff. I'm like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I don't know if that's like, you know, it is kind of like you're reaching here and there. Uh-huh. But then I can also see where, you know, Trump, you know, make America great again. That's traditional value. That's the pyramid. That's what he mm-hmm. represents. Right. And when you look at like the back of a one dollar bill, you see the the pyramid and then you see the eye of Providence over the pyramid. And some people say it's the eye of Horus over the pyramid. But the pyramid is the the structure, the the stability of your foundation, your morals, the the values mm-hmm. of America. And then as you rise again, when he becomes president again, he'll have that eye. And and I say that the eye this time is um, Space Force. Because everybody was saying that Space Force, they didn't know why it was created. Mm -hmm. But I think it was a data collection um, intelligence program. I think that they're using satellites and they're working with Elon Musk to collect people's data. And if he captured anything that had to do with the election and had anything to do with um, making himself right and making Mm -hmm. the the situation whole, then he would take that that I and then he would join together and become Horus when he rises again. And so it's kind of it's confusing just to kind of like put it in a nutshell. This is why I, I did an episode on it. And it's it's a little bit better edited, so that way it kind of flows a little bit better. But mm-hmm. the there's something with Egyptian mythology that is entwined with all of this stuff, and I don't know what it has to do with anything. What was the the dam in America where there was supposedly like Egyptian relics found before it was filled in? Oh, oh or, that's or in Tennessee. Is it? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Yeah, so when TVA was putting in dams and they were doing excavation, they found what they believed to be Egyptian relics. And some Egyptian professor who was out of Oxford was like, absolutely. This is absolutely what it is. And uh, the Tennessee Valley Authority, which was the government at the time, was like, yeah, we don't care. Pour the concrete. And they poured it in the dam. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was actually in a textbook. It's an older textbook. The guy who runs... Uh, Museum of Tarot out of Nashville. He's got a TikTok account. And he he actually has the book, and he highlights it in there. Um, I actually know the name of the town. It's very close to me, uh, but I cannot think of it to save my life right now. That's how that goes, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of that. A lot of that. I mean, the, the thing is, so much was flooded, and there's so many mysterious things. Like we look at all our our um, in the Northeast, or I say Northeast. I guess it's technically the Midwest. We have a lot of farmland. Well, you look in the old history books, there were mounds everywhere. And they mm. just got to level these out. Why? Because we're growing corn. What's in them? Don't worry about it. Keep keep going. 
I think there's a it lot of history the, here no one talks about. Well, wasn't the rumors as well of the, there being something like that in the Grand Canyon? And that's one of the reasons yes. that you can't yeah. go into it. Yes. Yeah, about the Smithsonian covering up. Like they, they, the Smithsonian and the, the explorer at the time who was from the Smithsonian made all the newspapers. And people were like, well, it was that time. And, you know, it was just hyperbolic and trying to sell newspapers that he had found a cave that was carved and it had, you know, relics from all over the world. And it was heavily into, you know, Egyptian artifacts and gods carved and now there's that whole section of uh the grand canyon you don't get to go to nobody gets to go to well yeah and then it's like where does this stuff go you know where do these artifacts go does the vatican have it you know who's holding mm -hmm. on to this and what do they know do these artifacts do something you know like when you put them together do they create some mm -hmm. sort of energy and is you know what are they trying to reproduce that somehow is that what cern is trying to do i don't know have you ever seen the movie uh, Under Silver Lake? I have not. Okay, it's it's a bizarre movie. I'm not going to say it's good by any stretch of the imagination. I think it has the guy's names. Andrew Garfield, one of the Spider-Men. I think that's his oh, name. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's one of A3's early productions. So they're doing lots mm. of big things now. This was a very early on production from them. And th I'll, I'll skip through it very quickly. The premise of it is, is that in our modern art and pop culture, and as things change, there are messages put in. Messages for people with eyes to see and ears to hear to pick it up and trace it down, like a map on a cereal box from the early 80s lines up with the Disney uh, map that's all to scale that shows you where you need to be to get enlightenment and find mm -hmm. the path. And they make it very simple like that. But I've always wondered if there was something more to that, not necessarily in pulp culture, pop culture, but in like artifacts and ancient things. Like you said, we're seeing these uh, monoliths go up around the world. Yep. What's going on there? Well, people pass it off. Somebody knows, mm -hmm. right? Even even in our little conspiracy, we can start clicking things together. It's like, mm, mm -hmm. this could be a lot of things. Maybe it's a message that's not for us, or maybe it's the beginning of a ritual work. Well, that's that's honestly what I was thinking is because, um, you know, right after all of these monoliths came up, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in 2020, you had a year of chaos, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you go back to that Osiris myth. Isis's wife represents chaos. And what did she need to bring about Horus? She needed the obelisk. And what is another word for mono, monolith is an obelisk. Yeah, it, it, it's an interesting thing. And, I, I, you know, now that you say that, it makes me think that, you know, ley lines, ley line conversions, uh, allegedly the Washington Monument is on one. You have um, in Nashville, we have the, uh, oh, what's it called? It's a replica of the one in Egypt. Man, I'm just having all kinds of brain farts today. I apologize for that. Uh, it's a large Greek temple. And it, again, it's mm. built on one that's over a cave. It, I would be interested to know if these obelisks are also set on maybe convergence points of ley lines. Like it is a massive global ritual to try and start something. Yeah. And I, I mean, what do you guys think about the Georgia Guidestones? Because it just came out. I was just about to say that. Yeah, because there was a, a documentary who came out and they identified who the creator was. I was going to do a TikTok video about this, but there's like uh, this documentary. They went, they finally like tracked down the guy who helped build the, because um, he, the, the, the RC Christian is the guy's mm -hmm. inscription. It's like a, a nom de plume. It's written on the, the slab. The construction guy who helped build those, they tracked him down and they were like, okay, so like blah, 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 blah. And they, they ultimately convinced him to like show them the records. He had like this big trunk full of records and on the records, they found like stuff that linked back to this doctor and they, they kind of did the, the age verification. They're like, he would be about the same age. He has this birthday. This guy has the same birthday. So they're pretty sure it's like this doctor who's like, known for wanting depopulation you know mm -hmm. and he's into that whole uh let's keep the earth at five hundred thousand or whatever it was five mm -hmm. million so it, you know what do you guys was that on a ley line why was it blown up what's what's going on there i mean i mean i th i think the the idea of why it was blown up is is the is the big question because it's it's one of two things isn't, isn't it it was either a show of resistance Mm -hmm. to the plan or it was a we could probably do without these if we're going to do this now if, if we're moving forward with this plan we could probably do with these not being around um i 
I, I don't know. I mean, they, they've been such a such a prominent part of conspiracy culture, you know, ever since they they were erected. I think if it was, I think if it was an act of rebellion, they wouldn't have bulldozed us to so quickly. They would. Yes. I mean, like, and I've said it here multiple times. A bomb has a fingerprint. Yep. The the chemical makeup that was used, the trigger mechanism that was used, how like that tells you a lot about somebody. They wasted zero time demolishing this thing. Mm-hmm. They well, weren't and even I, and plan. Yeah. Another interesting thing about this is if you go back to the explosion video, the cam, the timestamp on the camera, it blows up at like 33 seconds or there, there's a 33 in there. So everybody's like, oh, is this a Freemasonic kind of blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. I, I think that the message ran its course and they're putting out a new message. Again, it goes back to I, I've kind of come in more and more to these things. That there are things that are put out, like we were talking, or you were talking about uh, Egyptian mythos and things that are going on. Sounds an awful lot like Katy Perry's live performances when she was doing Dark Horse, right? Mm -hmm. Like she's. Yeah, a lot of Hollywood, yeah. Yeah, a lot of Hollywood. She's letting know that there's a message that, whether she's aware of it or not, I mean, she definitely has an art director and managers. And I, I'm not one that believes everybody's in on it. I think a lot of people just do whatever they're told to, to stay in the game. Mm hmm. Uh, it makes me wonder if there are messages and things. Um, and you got to be careful because that's how you become schizophrenic. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. You get paranoid, right? Yeah. Well, and, and if you look at Crowley, I mean, Alistair Crowley, that's what he did is, is apparently he traveled to Egypt and he spent mm -hmm. the night in the tomb and he had this visitation by the, the alien lamb. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Right. And so like, what did he know? Did he bring something back and, is everybody just following the teachings of um, the Lema? Yeah. So I, if I remember correctly, he got to Lamb after the culmination of his sex magic ritual that took forever to do it after multiple attempts. And Thelma, yeah, like one of the things, one of the premises of it, as I understand it, is a revealing process, similar to what Oddfellows used to do, you know, a revealing uh, and masonry to a certain extent, uh, revealing. And that, part of the pursuit of the information that was hidden from you begins the journey of enlightenment. And the journey of enlightenment is to shed yourself partially of your mortal and moral hangups. Yeah. Uh, and to, to open up and, and become more. And, and part of that is in the investigation, like part of the numbers and numerology and, mm -hmm. you know, bizarre things hidden within things. Uh, it's yep. yeah, it's, it gets, it gets weird out there, man. It gets weird. Fast. Freemasons get a bad rep. I mean, my my friend's granddad's a Freemason. He seems like a lovely bloke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's another thing too. Is like, is it is the whole conspiracy world meant to think that Freemasons are bad for a reason, or is this? I I mean, are they actually bad? I I don't know. I, well, full disclosure, I am one. <laughs> oh well, there you go. <laughs> uh, I yeah, you admit uh, that, Dave. Oh. <laughs> I've admitted on this channel several times. I got into it because I was curious and I found out that it's really just a bunch of old guys hiding from their wives. Yeah. <laughs> who, right. you know, have fish fries and raise money. And they themselves, I would say, probably don't realize most of what's in the ritual. And they're just going through it for giggles and fraternity and, you know, good causes. Uh, and I'm often told by people when I tell them that, well, you're not really in the club. It's a whole nother. That may very well be true. Like but at the I higher it, levels, like, right? Yeah, but at the local level, like because you 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 know you have the three level for there's two different kinds of masonry. Um, there's Blue Lodge and then there's Prince Hall on Blue Lodge, and uh, we have the three that you go through and you end up as a master mason, and then from there you can go to Scotch Rite or York Rite and you work those paths. You you know you do all that stuff. Uh, I just went to the one and stopped. I got to know everybody. It was fine. And then I moved around a lot and I haven't really gone to Lodge in probably 17 years. Mm. <laughs> so I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a great one there. I pay dues every year. Not, they're, not they're dedicated. All, they, yeah. They send well, me the bill. That's let, sure. Do you think Trump's a Freemason? Maybe. Uh, I mean, a lot of people are because. Like, that's one of the things that speaks out to me. Like there's oaths you swear as part of the ritual, right? You're going through, uh, and anyone can look this stuff up. It's not, it's not necessarily secret. Like I believe the discovery channel showed, uh, one of the rituals on like TV, like mm -hmm. different aspects of it. And, uh, in the United States lodge and ritual changes state to state. 
it's various things are changed just a little. Um, hmm. So that's interesting. Did they but tell you where the rituals originate from or what they mean or anything? Yeah, like that? you get a whole, well, so what they understand is history. Yeah. You get a, you get a whole briefing of it. Uh, but again, I'm into conspiracies and I said, like, Ooh, you know, nobody said this. I doubt they know that. Um, but it does get a bad rap. It's easy to paint a tail on it because I think it's something that a lot of people can reach for as yeah. opposed to, well, it's all Freemasonry. Is it, or is it the mystery religions? Is yes. it the hidden things? Yeah. Right. Like these guys are, are really just a fraternal order of people like you're supposed to be able to trust. And they're like, well, all the important people, of course they are in your community because they want to be able to go somewhere, have a conversation with someone that they, they know is somewhat being held accountable and whatever we say stays here. Well, yeah. and it's uh it's the secrecy that I think that gets people. It's like, they're going, okay, yeah. well, why is it so secret? You know, what aren't you telling us? You must be doing something bad. And that, that is from a different generation as I, as I, that's my belief. Uh, different generations did it different ways. Um, and the older, gen and, and that's the thing, like masonry in America is dying out. Mm. Then like every lodge I go to, I'm the youngest guy there by 20 to 30 years. Hmm. Is that down. by plan? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I think they want more, but you got a bunch of old dudes who are together and they've been friends for a long time and they don't necessarily like younger guys coming in. And mm -hmm. when they do, they try and put the burden of work on them, right? Like, well, I don't understand all this newfangled technology. You do everything. And then those guys are like, yeah, I'm not coming. I'm not, I'm not just, I'm, I, there was supposed to be something in it. Fraternity brotherhood hanging out. We were, we're 30 years apart. I don't do bass fishing. You gotcha. know what I mean? It's yeah. They're they're All the ones I've met thus far, they're just people. People are like, well, they're all great guys. They're people. Yeah. You know, no, honestly, you that's that's something that I've explored, too, is like um, it seems like it's purposefully the scapegoat. Right. Yes. Freemason. Blah, blah, blah. But the secret religions are a real thing. I mean, 100%. you're looking at Jack Parsons yes. and that's something that's that is, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that is a legit foundation of NASA yes. where you have Jet Propulsion's laboratory. This guy was a true occultist doing sex magic out in the desert. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, chanting the all mantra workings with uh, following Crowley. You know what I mean? Yeah. So was he with um, L. Ron Hubbard? L. Ron Hubbard doing that, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Who some believe that was spied or he was a spy uh, to spy on Jack Parsons. And See, was L. Ron, in L. Ron Hubbard, the, 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 there's something much more interesting about him than what we've been given because we're, we're kind of a. Uh, we're kind of fed him as this sort of comic type fool now, aren't we? Yeah. And he, I, I don't think you don't get the access that he had by being that comic book fool that just happened to be a good pulp writer. Well, I, I heard that he worked for either the military or some sort of secret service mm -hmm. in the, the military or government. And I don't know exactly which branch, but that's what he was. He was um, there was a rumor that he was kind of given this task to go spy on Jack Parsons and figure out what he was working on. And then yeah, because he didn't, L Ron Hubbard personally didn't partake in the sex magic. He sat there and wrote about it and he like was the scribe and he like watched the whole thing. But, um, so it, it makes you wonder, okay, why wasn't he partaking in this? Did he not really believe in it? Or was he just kind of there just to be the fly on the wall and provide the evidence of, you know, if if they did unleash he something, might have been shy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe he was just, you know, you know, he's a shower, not a or a, a grower, not a shower. <laughs> the first book, <laughs> you know. So I, I, but some people believe that L. Ron Hubbard was involved with Jack Parsons' death because they actually found out. Like the theory is that you know they found out what Jack Parsons was capable of bringing about. They mm -hmm. didn't want him to go any further. They didn't want anybody else to find out about this. So they had him blow up in the laboratory and, you know, there goes the knowledge. Can't keep having him rip open dimensional doorways. Well, and that's what I wanted to ask you guys. Do you think that's what, that's where aliens come from? Because there is a theory that they, that ritual <laughs> opened a realm to allow yeah. aliens in. I I think me and me and Dave, uh, Ollie, I think you, you flip flop a bit, don't you? But I think me and Dave are 
kind of on on the same level of the, of this sort of stuff where i think there's there's something else there you know i, I think these re- these reports of people meeting uh like beings that like do mm. abductions and stuff like that i i believe those people that that mm. they're experiencing something i don't believe whatever these things are is they're in little alien garages building mm. metal alien craft and then they fly billions of light years here to do something so i i mean i i i don't know but i'd always i always edge more on the on the side of these things are more like what we would refer to as demons than they are like space brothers like interdimensional yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, don't get me wrong i'm sucking on the toe of that theory <laughs> he's always sucking on a toe hey that's whether people big, know it or not big toe is tempting you yeah. know it uh for me it's like it's interesting i believe that one our government does have technology uh, incredibly advanced technology that they have found mm-hmm. i don't necessarily believe that it's alien do you um, think it was given to us though or do you think they just found it i think they just found it i think they were i think they did the same thing the nazis did when they were searching all over the planet dig, digging up ancient religious sites finding technology maybe not understanding it like you can't understand the circuit board but it can get you thinking in the right direction mm-hmm Right, it gives you these revolutionary ideas about propulsion or how things work or how to move electricity that they never had before. Yep. Um, and they're trying to figure them out still. That's what I believe. Uh, I don't necessarily believe they're alien. I don't. I don't think they are. I think what we would associate with aliens and the abduction phenomenon and most of the lights in the sky uh, would be non-corporeal things that are somehow phasing in and out of this reality who can occasionally affect things. I think that they can cross over but they need help. Hmm. Yeah. Um, And that's why they're coming here. You think that they need like humans to help them? I don't know. I don't like, I, I, these are all just crazy theories, right? Uh, Crazy theories as it goes. Like, are you familiar with Oak Ridge, Tennessee? Mm -mm. Oak Ridge national lab where they developed the uh, fuel for the nuclear bombs is a entire city that they classified and hid from America. Wow. They built it, built pillboxes around it, and then nobody was allowed in or out. It's where all at one time was the highest concentration of PhDs in the world. Um, they have multiple labs there, government facilities, Department of Energy runs it all. They're the one department in the United States government that can tell the president to go take a walk. Mm. They can tell anyone to go take a walk. A general's like, well, we're gonna see it. No, you're not, because we have a privatized army here that's equally as well clipped as you are, and mm. we're not gonna let you on. It's a fascinating thing to look into. They're also one of the few things you really don't want to criticize uh, because they will call you uh, hmm. or knock on your door. They're they're very interesting and a lot scary. But they also have all these private labs. And in those private labs, like they fund, I believe it's 87% of the physical sciences. Hmm. So anything super advanced that's going on, they have a hand in it. All the smart people, they have a hand in it. Well, and it makes you wonder, are they the only one? Like, are there multiple labs like that? And who's at the top of that? Who's funding them? So that mm. that's the beauty of it. The national labs are all over the country. Mm. And people just don't talk about it because everybody there has a security clearance or they're security qualified or they're going, like, people just don't talk. Uh, if all the brilliant PhDs, where are all our scientists? There's only a few in academia. These labs and these private companies, so, like, the buildings aren't just the DOE. It's Lockheed Martin who owns a building who then rents it out to three other sub companies that they licensed out of Panama to do this work with these scientists mm-hmm. all on these little projects. No one knows what they're working on. Endless funds and research to basically do anything. Yep. Uh, the one here in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, they put out this insane ad. Like it was like an ad or an advertisement saying we're working with these new particle lasers to try and break a hole in reality. And everyone's like, no, don't do that. What do you, why? Yeah. One, why are you telling us? Don't, <laughs> what? Have you not seen the mist? Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's like, like they have to tell you. So that way it like clears their conscience or that they avoid so. the karmic debt of something. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where there is something with NASA. And even like if you look at current NASA projects mm-hmm. that they're doing right now, like, um, there was something about landing on a meteor to extract Mm -hmm. or an asteroid to mine it and, and bring the sample back. All of that was named after 
Egyptian or uh, mm-hmm. mythical gods. Yeah. And that thing that's out in the, the extractor that's still kind of flying around in space, its new mission is to go to the um, uh, Apophis, Apophis, the comet yeah. that's supposed yeah. to end the world. It's, it's like this biblical freaking comet, right? Yeah. Twenty Is it 2027 it's supposed to do its flyby? Uh, I, I believe know. it's this year. Or it it does is, I think it's 2027 and 2029. And then he's yeah. on the way back. Yeah. yeah. Or something. Yeah, it's got, but yeah. it's just like even they're bringing in like biblical comets with this stuff. So it's like, mm-hmm. what, are, what are we doing here? You know? Even yeah. just like you say, the Egyptian name. And we, we had an, um, a, an, a, an engineer that works for NASA on the show. And it was one of the things we, we spoke about there was it, it, the naming. The naming of these things is so weird. And, it, and to be perfectly honest, for like for you know, a country that likes itself very un-american to start you know to, to call these things like you know, surely that should have been like the war eagle or something yeah right yeah. <laughs> yeah. the rattlesnake yeah something something like you know heavy metal or like you know the flying yeah. eagle i don't know what what do yeah. you think to is it because seeing we've gone to nasa what do you think of uh musk and spacex uh, as far as like, it, do I trust it or is it okay? Like, what do you think of Elon Musk as a person? Do you think he? Do you think he's quite possible? Because you, the, the whole thing that you do with Donald Trump, possibly being the Antichrist. Yeah, I've said that about Elon Musk, and I love Elon Musk, but at the same time, it it could quite possibly be something that I shouldn't love. Do exactly. you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I, I've done an episode on uh, is Elon Musk the Antichrist as well. And like um, th- even with that one episode with uh, Tim Pool and Donnie Darkin, they go into how Elon Musk could be the false prophet or the mm-hmm. the next beast, because there's two beasts pretty much. There's like mm-hmm. the, the original beast is the Antichrist and then the, the beast gives power to the false prophet. And so if you look at... <clears throat> If you look at what Elon Musk is doing, like he purchased Twitter, made it X, which is like the X symbolism. It, it means God. You know, if you look into the the number or the letter X, everything around the letter X ties back to some mythical just being or God or, or something strange like that. And he's been obsessed with the letter X like his whole entire life, it seems like. But he gave free speech back supposedly you know and so he's he's garnering the trust of everybody by making this bold move and he's saying the right things he's speaking truths he's doing things that you know he's calling out this you know in donnie darkens um uh speech the harlot system this babylon system that you know is doing things to children they're they're doing things behind the scenes that they're trying to to control you but meanwhile He's also doing the the brain chip technology. He's openly admitted that he wants like a technocracy on Mars. And, and the technocracy is what happened during COVID, you know, where you have trust in your science figures and they're running the whole country and possibly the world. And you have um, he he's openly called for carbon credits. He agrees with universal basic income. Um, he is a, a Trojan horse, in my opinion. I don't trust mm-hmm. the man. And it's it's something there's a clip going around where you had um, uh, Ike, David Ike, he was on the Alex Jones show and he was saying exactly what I was thinking is that just because um, when Elon Musk bought Twitter, that meant that we couldn't talk anything bad about him or it just it gave us this it uh, we were we were able to let our guard down and we're not asking the rough questions about what his involvement is with all of these extracurricular activities Mm -hmm. and, and what are his intentions? You know, we're not drilling him on these hard questions. And if you do, you get this response like, Whoa, 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 bro. Come on. What are you doing? It seems like you're pushing here, bro. What are you doing? You know, it's like, well, Mm -hmm. no, I just want to know because you're, you're coming out against, you know, all this other stuff. You say you're for free speech, but then you come and say, well, I'm for free speech, not uh, freedom of reach. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, so certain types of speech you're okay with, but others you're not. 
And it's, it's one of those things where it's like a soft sale. And that's mm-hmm. the way that David Icke put it is, you know, you have the WEF, the, the WHO, you have everybody coming out saying like one world government, globalism, the rise of central bank, digital uh, currency, surveillance state, and all this stuff. And that's hardcore. That's the hardcore method. Whereas Elon Musk is the soft core approach or the, the, the soft sale. Mm -hmm. where he's saying like whoa 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 like slow your roll we don't have to do that but i do like these ideas and and they're not wrong on this we can slowly kind of introduce these ideas you know the the best way to you know ai is a a threat to humanity but he also says if you can't beat it join it Mm -hmm. so where does that where does that come in and i've heard him ask these things in certain interviews and he doesn't have a, a clear delineation he just kind of um, goes on a tangent. Mm. See that there has to be something as far as like the like the the control thing with the WEF. There has to be some sort of other like plan behind it because to me anyway, if I wanted to control a country, I wouldn't want to uh, like put wristbands on everybody and lock them up for certain amounts of time with like, like bullshit like carbon taxes for. Um, man-made climate change which may or may not actually be a a real thing Mm -hmm. um i'd give it everybody back 1992 because if you could do that you you make everybody feel good and then they will they will fall in line with you and you just you just roll forward with it that's why i always did that there has to be something behind the uh like you say the uh hidden religion side of this because it it there's something deeply anti-human about it. It's not just about control. It's about it's anti-human. Mm-hmm. Well, and how do you get people to follow you? You say the right things. You do the right things. You look like you're for them. You look like you're helping them, mm-hmm. and you have to get their trust. And that's what Elon Musk is doing. And he's done it to the point where you can't question what he what his involvement is with all of these other things. Like, mm-hmm. what are you really doing? And if you look at um. Uh, what is his internet? Starlink? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Everybody's like, okay, well, that's great. He has this other Starlink internet. You know, it's it's a satellite service. Um, there's this talk that there's going to be a cyber attack. You know, that's that's one thing that's on my bucket list that's going to happen or my checklist yeah. of whatever, bingo card. Mm-hmm. So when that happens, the internet's going to go bye-bye and we'll have Elon Musk. And he's already shown that, you know, Starlink is capable of, coming in as a backup source for internet if needed you know he's done it with ukraine he's done it with several other islands out there that have catastrophes and stuff but if you think about it who else can compete with that he's monopolizing the internet through starlink it's Mm -hmm. a one world internet and he's doing it under the guise of you know, uh, it's going to be a savior it's going to it's going to be there when they pull the plug when the bad guys pull the plug but everybody's falling for it and they're going, well, oh, what what else will there be? We won't have any other options. There is no other Starlink. There is no other satellite up there. But to to maybe be playing like literal devil's advocate, maybe that was the reason for Starlink. Maybe maybe that if if he's looked at the idea of a cyber a cyber attack being a problem, then maybe maybe Starlink was birthed because of that because he knows that's good that's going to come in the what what do you think of the um what what look like blatant cyber attacks over the last few months uh what do i think about them Mm. what do you think the purpose of them is um i think it's going to definitely well i'm kind of biased with the united states here but i think it's going to affect the election Mm -hmm. i personally think that they're going to throw something right during the election that will cause chaos to the point where we have to question the outcome. Mm. So if Donald Trump wins by a landslide, we won't know because the election results won't be available. And if they are available, they'll be so corrupted by this cyber attack that we won't be able to trust them. And it's either going to delay the entire process. We're going to have to do something like either by write in or, you know, by hand, you know, like a physical ballot, Mm -hmm. or we're going to have to do it again. It's going to delay the process and when it gets delayed the people in power right now will still be in power because they're not going to hand it over until Mm -hmm. they figure out who wins 
So that's so that, what I think the ultimate goal of it is. So, but that that leads you to the um, that that leads you down the path then of the idea that Trump is like the the guy you want in. Um, if not it, necessarily. If but if it, I mean, unless we go down the um, like down the road of it, you know, it, it's there to make him seem like the attractive thing. Cause it's there exactly. to make, make yeah. him look look uh, look attacked. But yeah, it fe- it feels like a convoluted way of doing it. It really does. You know, it's like, but if you were if you were kind of trying to trick somebody into falling into the system, like you were saying, let's go back to the 1992, let's get the trust of the government again. How would you do that? Mm-hmm. You would have a figure come out against the current situation that everybody, you know, everybody doesn't trust it. They can clearly see that there's bad things going on. They're making it very obvious right now uh, with the border situation here in America, uh, with inflation, with everything else that they're, they're kind of trying to purposefully uh, prop up that Joe Biden is doing such a bad job mm-hmm. that it makes it look like it's all on purpose, you know, and there is no other choice. And right now it's like the obvious choice is to vote for Trump, but it's like, okay, what is going to be the repercussions of that? You know, it's, it's going to be the obvious choice for this election, but then what does the next three years look like? You know, what comes after Trump? What does Trump replace this system with? And that's we haven't heard that. He's not mm-hmm. talked about that. You know, he said drill, baby, drill. Yeah. He's uh he's talked about some energy stuff, but you look at his previous performance with his cabinet, who he hired, mm-hmm. you know, he has not come out about that. He has not said, I am not going to hire the swamp. <laughs> you know, he said he was going to drain it and he hired them. Yeah. And some people were like, Oh, yeah, but that that brought them out into light. I'm like, some of them. You know, it brought out the head people, but there's a lot of swamp that did a lot of dirty work in the background that we don't even know about. And they're still doing stuff. So it's like, is he going to fulfill on these obligations or these these uh, commitments that he's set forth? Or is he really just kind of leading people into a trap, you know? And it does seem like a really convoluted way to do it, Mm -hmm. but it's almost like it's the same coin. It's two sides of the same coin. The coin wants to stay in power it knows one side of the coin is ruined. So it has another side that it can present as the good guy and still retain that power. And that's what I kind of feel that is going on with Trump. Well, I think that's one thing the, the Q thing has in common with the, like this modern day, like disclosure movement as well, Mm -hmm. because the Q, Q thing was like very heavy, like trust the military, trust the government not the deep state government, but the good governments out there. So yeah. they're, they're after, they're, they're for you. Um, and with the dis, disclosure stuff, it's all of a sudden people are like, we're, we're, we're conspiracy theorists. We shouldn't <laughs> trust the government. This shouldn't. No. And it's, it, it's fractured. It's fractured everything. I, I, I think there's, there must have been like a, a flip flop point as well. Because mm-hmm. like when I was like first getting into like what you, what you consider like alt topics and stuff like that, you know, around the yeah after nine eleven like zeitgeist and stuff like that, uh, I always thought of conspiracy theory as being like a left wing thing. You know, mm-hmm. it, it was it was it was left wing like anti government stuff, and from nowhere it's become right wing conspiracy theorist. Yep, and I can't quite pinpoint where that's come from. Well, even look at the anti-vax movement. I mean, uh, that was definitely a left-wing thing. My body, yeah. my choice. That I mean, it fell mm-hmm. right into that where, you know, don't tell me what to do with my body. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, you have people screaming at you in their mask saying, hey, put your mask on or, you know, go get your, your medical medicine. And, uh, you know, it's like, it's one of those things where it has completely flipped. Where... You have the left kind of trusting the government more and the right going against it. But I don't know. I think this has happened before. I mean, back in um, it was like 2013 or it was when Obama was in control. You had um, the largest military exercise performed in several states like Texas. Jade Helm. Yes, Jade Helm. Right. And that's when because Obama was in power, everybody thought the military was bad. 
and they didn't want the military to take control. And they're like, this is it. You know, Alex Jones is out there saying, this is it. Obama's going to use the friggin' uh, the military to take us over. Right. And now all of a sudden we want the military to take over, you know, it, it's not, well, uh, Alex Jones just put another thing out. Hasn't he talking about the, uh, like some sort of, um, martial law situation as well. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know. And I don't yeah. know, honestly, I don't know what to think of Alex Jones. I don't know if he's like legit or if he's kind of just, you know, I think there are multiple branches of intelligence communities. I think even the CIA has multiple spurs within it. And mm. in my personal opinion, Tucker Carlson and Alex Jones are on one of those spurs. Yeah. It may not necessarily be the one, it could be the one that's very pro us, but they're 100% tied with family connections. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard someone put it very, very good. It's like they're both trust fund kids with CIA connections. It's like, yes. think about this. Um, like, how, how are they doing this? And everything's okay. And mm -hmm. people are like, well, Trump was prosecuted. So was Eric Prince, who owned Blackwater. And later it came out that he was a Knox CIA officer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, whoa. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, Tucker interviewed Vladimir Putin, and Putin called out Tucker saying, hey, you applied for the CIA. Good thing you didn't work for him. Wink, wink, you know? Wink, wink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it. it's very interesting. I always go to one thing, and I've said it on the show multiple times, is that the media, mainstream media, wants you to feel and think a certain way. If you read a news article or a headline or watch a show and you're like, oh, I can't believe that. That's exactly what they wanted. Mm -hmm. It's a hundred percent manipulation. There's very little fact. It is crafted to manipulate you. Even if they're crafting how they word the facts. And I think they've moved into the side media now. I think they started that with Alex Jones a long time ago and now they're just flooding it with their people. If you just saw, what is it? Patrick Bet David's massive podcast just took on Como. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he signed him. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, what? <laughs> but I find yeah. how like people that hang out together weird as well. I mean, like I, I I'm I've I've been a massive Rogan fan for years. You know, there's there's a good chance with the way podcasts went that maybe none of us are sat here without the Joe Joe Rogan experience yeah. being becoming as massive as it was. Mm -hmm. Is um but then you've got like how what chain of events have to happen? for rogan before like big fame you know when he was doing the the uh, i forgot where his uh, the comedy tv show he did the um talk radio talk yeah In yeah effect. um but like he's big fans with alex jones you know mm -hmm. in the early day so what what's the chances of the world's biggest conspiracy theorist and the world's biggest influencer uh, and uh, I mean, arguably, you could arguably say the biggest media company in the world now, mm -hmm. knowing each other at that point, and then like time progressed in the way it did. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, they both have tremendous sway. And, you know, you've you listened to Alex Jones and he was like, you know, Joe Rogan, you know, we have some beef and all this stuff, but he's opening his eyes and all this stuff. And now Joe Rogan's on the good side. And it's like, OK, well was Joe Rogan cuz they're both making a ton of money, right? Mm, yes. So who is providing this money? If if Alex Jones was banned off of all of these platforms, how is he allowed to make so much freaking money? Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. How are any of these media companies still alive when there are mediocre podcasts middle of the road who have more viewership than any any talk show on CNN? Yep. And when you look at um I, I think the whole Alex Jones phenomenon when they when they banned him, mm -hmm. I think they use that as a precursor to ban everybody for the whole Q stuff and the whole uh, election interference. Like misinformation is a large umbrella now that will be used to control whatever they want, mm -hmm. because like what is misinformation? Like what is the truth? You know, like six months ago or a year ago, you could go get the medical uh, miracle. And everybody's saying it works, you know, 100% of the time. And then now you look at it and there's a lot of problems with it. Mm -hmm. So it's like yesterday's truth becomes today's lie. And it's, you know, it, it's, it all works that way. We and on had, that, um, what's that? I was going to say we had Jay, Jay Chansley on yeah. and um, his, his views on Q have completely changed mm. to what he started. So, I mean... 
like you said at the beginning, it, it, it's it's one of those things. It, I think Lee said it. It's a nice thought to think that this the, there is some good, some 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 people working for the for the greater good. Mm-hmm. But in in reality, it's all just it's all just politics. Maybe it's easier to not think of it as good and bad guys and just say just say, well, hopefully there's less bad people. Hopefully, you know, it's like maybe there's just. Maybe there's just some greedy people that see what the um, World Economic Forum are doing and go, well, hang on a second, I don't want that because I really liked capitalism because it's it's done me well so far and I'd like it to do my children well too. And at that point, maybe maybe greed is the best we can hope for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's actually, um, I don't know if you guys listen to Tinfoil Hat, Sam Tripoli. Yeah, mm-hmm. Love it. So that's kind of his thesis on Donald Trump is he thinks Donald Trump is like the leader of this mob boss. And it lives. it is like this game of thrones type of thing where you have, that's why Donald Trump has not been killed. Like, let's be honest. Like he is a mob boss. He has the protection of a mob boss uh, to the equal or on par of the president of the United States. Okay. Can you prove that though? I don't know. I think, I, I, I think the fact people aren't dead proves that there's something else i mean if to, just quickly to go back to rogan um the one thing i will I, I'll, I'll always stand by there is during the um during the pandemic and like the, the rollout of the stabbies you know just when you think of him having like mccullough um all of the names have escaped me but you know the 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 like the the hit row of people Dr. that were alone yeah from. yeah yeah yep. um I mean I'm gonna throw out there that those podcasts probably saved more lives than any of the happy juice yeah yeah, yeah. I I think a lot of these things like whether it be politics or conspiracy the crazy things that are 100% happening, but we cannot articulate it because we can't, we we don't have a 50,000 foot view to be able to connect the dots. Mm -hmm. And they're very good at doing that. I think what it comes down to ultimately is it's a quote I'd heard a long time ago and I'm going to butcher it now, but it's, you know, the strong do as they will and the weak endure what they must. You know, all we can do is have our conjecture and do the best we can do and hope that it works out. But the reality is there aren't any good guys. You know, like they, they don't yeah. get to that level being a good guy. Yeah, that might be the the sad reality of it, you know. <clears throat> and that's yeah. not black pilled, because I mean no, there no. is there is, you know, good to be had and yes. you know. There's our life. That and I think with that, I, I always focus on that like my kids, my wife, my life, mm-hmm. the things that I do, those matter more. Yep. Because it's the one thing they, you know, they're trying to control. Those are the things they want to restrict. Those are the things they want influence because they want it all. I and mean, they can't have it. So enjoy everything, every little decision that flies in their face and just live your life. Yep. You know? Yeah. And that's, that's really, um, you know, after the whole Q stuff dem- never happened, that's kind of what all three of us on the, the part of my American show, we kind of, we kind of came to this uh, conclusion that it's like, oh, local is more important and the most important than anything like our, our, you know, who is your governor? Who is your mayor? I mean, I have no idea who my freaking mayor is. Who is the leader of your school board? You know, those types of things. So wherever you have control as an individual within your personal community, that's where your power really resides. I think that is the best, an amazing piece of information tonight. (laughs) That's, that that is key, absolutely. And on that, I think we've been going an hour and forty six. Yeah, yeah, it's been a great conversation, so, boys. Yeah, man, uh, great. We've enjoyed having you on. And for all those watching, check out Strange Shauna. Anything else you want to plug throughout there? Make happen. We can make Ollie put anything you want in the description. <laughs> you know, uh, just go to Strange Sauna. Um, I'm on YouTube. I'm on TikTok. I might have to create another TikTok because I'm one strike away from being banned. Your oh, TikTok's yeah. like mental. It's like it's, yeah. it's huge. Yeah, you know, it, it goes through ups and downs. So I might try to make another one. But just search for Strange Sauna. You'll find me. Awesome. Do you think TikTok was going to get banned? Uh, I could definitely see it being banned. Because there, I find stuff. We were just talking about this. We find stuff on TikTok that you won't find anywhere else. Mm-hmm. You know, there's information that I found on TikTok that was, you know, extremely valuable, informative, or informative. 
And I, I wouldn't have found that on X. I wouldn't have found that on definitely Facebook or Instagram. So well, to the audience, go check out Greg Strake Shauna. He's uh TikTok, YouTube, all the places. Man, thanks for coming on. If you hang out with us for just a second, says the guys take us out of all this. Will do. Crazy. Thanks for, having me. Thanks for yeah. coming, man. Cheers, going, man. Awesome conversation. Cheers. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody make sure Lee, where, where's the, uh, the spot? Spotify has changed now, hasn't it? It's, uh, it's Oh in... yeah. Yeah. I should have said this at the beginning of the show. We changed our host. So if you try and listen to us on Spotify and the link says it doesn't work, research it and find the actual alien addict like feed. Yeah. And we also have one month left of these t-shirts before they get changed for another another four t-shirts there you go and and there, there is some there's some beasts out there but yeah um tomorrow we are gonna be uh we, we're gonna be talking about the princess and uh strange little picture so yeah mm -hmm. but I, th I think i think it's gonna go deeper than that we're gonna go into the whole ai thing because i think it's gonna be a bit boring just to speak about that picture but <laughs> We're going to look at the bigger picture. And Sunday, Sunday, we've got remote viewing with, is it, is it Courtney Brown, Lee? Yes. Courtney Brown? Yeah. So there yes. we go. It's, it, we, you've got a, you've got a compact week, people. Good night, God bless. Mind the bugs that bite. Make sure you subscribe to Strange Sauna, who is also in a sauna. Yes. Now, if that doesn't deserve a like and a subscribe, I don't know what does, because that is just thinking outside the box. It's commitment. People are strange. 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 Is that strange? That is strange. 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 missed the end b-roll because i had to go take a pee pee but i made it i'm here <laughs> you, you're right Riley. showers all around it's four seconds dave four seconds to give you some magic <sighs> we really need to tell guests that we do this rambly but after the show finishes because no, i like looking at the expressions as we continue <laughs> sorry Greg. <laughs> <laughs>